Good morning. Good morning. So glad you are here today. First, a few announcements. Um, Andrea Thompson is in hospitalized. She had a heart attack. She had surgery. Um, she's recovering. Um, but it's been a slow process, of course. So I was with Rhonda Saturday night, Friday night, and Friday night to the hospital. So keep praying for Andrea that God can restore that heart back to full power. Um, also, um, Raquel's Aunt Betty and Grandma Irene has passed away. Um, so please be in prayer for Raquel and Todd and family. I feel like there's a lot going on. And just we need to cover ourselves in prayer. Um, so tomorrow is Laundry Love at 4 30 at the laundromat in Oatana, Cedar, Cedar Dale laundromat. So this past Sunday we saw a movie and had dinner. It was a great movie. We're gonna plan that again, so if you missed it, I just saw an ad for a new movie called His Only Son about Abraham Isaac. It looks powerful. So maybe that's the one, maybe. And there's two women's events coming in May. They're both on May 6th. Information is on the bulletin board or on the table out there. So we're collecting donations for the Ellendale Food Shelf the rest of the month. We gave the first half to the Deal County Food Shelf, maybe. So thank you for your donations. Thank you for giving for that, supporting those people with their needs. Um, so we are in that. I pray that this time has been special for you. I invite you to come on Wednesday, worship, Lent service. We share a meal before, and I understand we're going to have lasagna. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so come and have lasagna, and then we'll worship the Lord. I'm going to sign up for uh, Lilies for Resurrection Sunday. The cost is $12. To order one, a sign up by March 31st. Our men's Bible study is going strong. We're studying the book of Ezekiel, which I, wow, it's, it's, it's getting after me. It's a powerful book. Um, so, Matt, more men, please come because it's a great time with the Lord, great time of fellowship. It's just a powerful time with God. And for me, for me, it's been foundational. Really, it's been foundational for my time here. So please come and enjoy that time. And after worship, we have a prayer together. So I invite you to stay for that as we pray as a church for needs around Steele County. I think that's all I have for announcements, unless I miss something that someone's thinking about. Okay, so let us greet each other with the peace of Christ.
let there be light, the light of Christ. Let's approach the throne of grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of our need. God of all creation, Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, God who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies through the Spirit who lives in us. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let's kneel before the Lord, our Creator. Let's pray. Eternal God. Time for the readings. We're going to skip the first readings, the first Samuel scripture, and start with the psalm. Thank you. So the psalm today is Psalm 23. The Lord, and we'll read it responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the battle of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today is from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned, or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. 
we must, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors of those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how are your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So, for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, I now see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of our Lord. John chapter 9 is power-packed. 
it's a long verse, but I, I had to hear all of it because it's such a great, it's just such a great story of the life of Jesus and how he interacts with us and how he sees. He sees everything. So when I was preparing for the sermon, I almost, I confess to you, I blew by uh, verse 1. And I shouldn't have. Jesus saw a blind man from birth. I'm like, I wonder if that's the first time he's ever been seen, really seen as a human being. I just wonder. And Jesus' compassion was just poured out upon this, upon this man who was blind. There's a lot of ideas behind this text that I want to get out in front of us before we start digging in. So, chapter 9 is a real-life illustration of the claim Jesus made in chapter 8 that I am the light of the world. And he, he, Jesus, brings victory over darkness. Some Old Testament scriptures that help light this stuff up too. So Psalm 146, 8. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Isaiah 29, 18. Out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. Isaiah 35, verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Isaiah 42, 7 to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. And I found this in Leviticus. You shall not put a stumbling block before the blind. So I was trying to remember, was anybody in the Old Testament healed of blindness? And I didn't have time to research it deeply, but I couldn't find a story. Do you remember one in the Old Testament where somebody was healed of blindness? Well, why I'm wondering that is because was that saved only for the Messiah? Only the Messiah bring healing to the sight, to the, to the blind. If that's true, that's really cool. <laughs> to me, that's awesome. Only Jesus can bring sight. Real sight. So in verse 2, the disciples asked Jesus, was it this man or his parents who sinned? So the disciples kind of sounds like Job's friends. Um, there must be some hidden sin somewhere. There's got to be. So most people back then believed that that sickness Trouble is caused by sin and no other reason. Jesus is coming to blow that out of the water. The Jewish people even thought they allowed in some cases the possibility of a person sinning before birth. I'm not sure how they got that. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Jesus is challenging his ancient paradigm of suffering is caused by sin. I'm not saying it's not, but it's not always the case. So I was thinking, when we go through a struggle or we're fighting off sin, we should pray. God, display your work in me. Display your work in me. Verses 4 and 5. We must work the works of him who sent me while it's still day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So this is really cool. During the festival of tabernacles, Jerusalem was lit up big time to celebrate. 
That's awesome to me. During, during the Feast of Tabernacles, the tongue is lit up. I also think about um, the passages in the Old Testament, the light of the nations. So Isaiah 49, 6. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Also, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's a, a scroll written called the War Scroll. And it teaches about the war between darkness and light. Those who follow God's light and those who belong to the darkness. And the, and the conflicts that happen because of that. That's so applicable to, to, for today. We follow the light. And we enter a world that belongs to darkness. So light is a description of Jesus and his effect on the world. And that effect forces us to choose sides to be for or against, to be in the light or in the darkness. Verses 6 and 7. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. He anointed the man's eyes with mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. So my first thought was, he's still not seeing, but Jesus sent him to the pool. He couldn't see. And the guy, the, guy, the guy instantly went. He didn't fight. He, he went. And he washed and he came back. He could see. So I thought about the Old Testament again, Genesis 2 7, that the Lord formed the man of dust, of dust from the ground. So Jesus took dust from the ground and gave the man what he wasn't given at birth. The, his, the, God's creation is still happening today. The new creation is coming. It's here now. Another cool connection about the, the, the tabernacle in the Old Testament. So this pool of Siloam, so its water was used um, during a ceremony for the festival of booze, for the festival of tabernacles. They poured this water on the, on the altar. And the pool name being sent, you know, that has a whole lot of stuff going on there. So Jesus sent the man to the pool. Jesus was sent by his father. Jesus was sent from heaven. So in, the, in, in that scripture I see in verses 6 and 7, I see the words of Jesus, go wash. I see the dust of creation. And I see the waters that were poured out during the Feast of Tabernacles, all combining into a new life for this man born blind. Verses 8 and 9, the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. But the man kept saying, I am the man. I am the man. So we all know that beggars have a hard life. They're refused often. They're looked down upon. And this was his life for his whole life. So I, as I read about these people responding, the neighbors, I wonder if any knew this man, like he was unknown or unseen. Did anybody really know him, like Jesus knows him? So I'm going to go to verse 13. So the Pharisees, um, they brought the man to the Pharisees. And John makes the point it was a Sabbath day. 
when Jesus healed the man's sight. The Pharisees asked him how he received his sight. He told them, if you put one of my eyes, I wash and I see. The Pharisees said, this man is not from God. Or does he keep the Sabbath? Others said, how can a man who's a sinner do such signs? So of course there was division among the Pharisees. And I think this division that was happening, I think there was some, so there's the written law in scripture, then there's the oral traditions, and the oral laws, interpretations, more ideas, more teachings. So I think they were tripping over what was written and then the oral teachings. And that's what Jesus is saying. It is not, it's fine to heal on the Sabbath. Your man-made law interpretation says it's not okay. But I have come here to say it is good work. They asked him again to the blind man, what do you say about Jesus since he has opened your eyes? He said, he's a prophet. So some of the people, some, believed that prophets ceased with the ending of the Old Testament. That's what some believed. So when he said this, I'm sure some Pharisees said, nope, that cannot be true. The Jews didn't believe he was born blind. He didn't believe he received his sight. So they called the parents. They just kept pressing into this, into this vision they had. Is this your son who was born blind? How does he then now see? His parents said, we know this is our son. And we know he was, he was born blind. Ask him how it happened. He can speak for himself. So it feels, that felt kind of cold to me when I first read that. The parents were just, let him answer. But then John says something inter interesting, how the parents said these things because they were afraid of the Jews. They were afraid of being kicked out of the synagogue. Because if you confess Jesus, they, were, they, were, they threatened you with that. So his parents said, Ask him. So there is a big debate about the timing of all that and synagogues, and but I really believe that John's disciples experienced being kicked out of synagogues. So they kept asking the Pharisees, "Come, this man on trial." For a second time, they asked the man, give glory to God. We know this man's a sinner. So back then, that phrase actually meant give glory to God by telling the truth. When questioning someone for wrongdoing, it was a command, it's a call for confession. To me so far, it feels like the gospel is on trial. They said to him, what did he do to you? They're still quizzing. They're still, this man's still on trial. How do you open your eyes? He said to them, I've told you already, but you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Great response. Great response. He reminds me of the woman at the well. They're both, they both got some good, fun, good foundations of theology in their mind. They know what's going on. I think more than the Pharisees do. So of course, after his little great answer, perfect answer actually, they were mad, the Pharisees. They reviled him saying, you are his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know God spoken to Moses, but for this man, we don't know where he comes from. For this man, So we all know that Moses testified about Jesus. If you're a disciple of Moses, you're a disciple 
of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught Moses the law, and then Moses taught us. So I found this little note. Sometimes when people were insulting, they, were, they would not state their name. That's why they said this man. That was an insult. But again, the man. Another great answer. Why is this an amazing thing? Why this is an amazing thing? You do not know where he comes from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens. He continues, never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. So this man states a principle that God listens to the godly. God listens to the righteous. They got mad. They're done debating this, 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 this person. They're looking down upon him. And they say, you were born in utter sin. It was a personal attack. And you would teach us? And they cast him out of the synagogue. That was their response. Makes me a little angry, actually. So again, the Pharisees don't have a, a response, an argument to make, so they personally attack him. Personally attack him. And then cast him out. So I was thinking, was this casting out really, really a loss to this man? I mean, was he like, oh, all right. It seems like the man was cast out of a system that was determined to, to label him a sinner, that was determined to uncover his sin. They were determined to find sin in that home. They didn't see the man as an image of the father. They saw it as a theological problem to be solved. They're so stuck in their paradigm. Jesus heard that they cast him out. And having found the man, he asked them, do you believe in the Son of Man? So Son of Man can simply mean human being, but my mind always goes to Daniel. And behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a Son of Man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is one that shall not be destroyed. It's the only real, permanent reality. Jesus said, sorry, then Jesus, Jesus continues, So Jesus asked them, do you believe the Son of Man? And the man said, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said, You have seen him, and it, it is he who is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. So this is similar, similar to the woman at the well. The woman said, I know Messiah is coming. When he comes, he'll tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Kind of cool. So I learned this little note. Jewish people resented bowing down and expressing so much adoration to humans. 
But Jesus, we know Jesus is not a human. So the man's response is significant. He worshipped Jesus. This was something due to God alone. Also know that Jesus did not stop him from worshiping. I'm guessing this really made the Pharisees angry. So this man's sight begins to become faith. He begins to see in Jesus the one who is saving him. He sees in Jesus the one who is rescuing him from darkness. He sees Jesus as his righteousness. And this will be the only righteousness he will have access to because he was cast out. So the man is moving in the direction of righteousness by faith. So first the man stated, the man called Jesus. Then later he said, he is a prophet. Then later he said, this is a man from God. Then he said he believes in the Son of Man and worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I came into the world that those who do not see and those who see may become blind. So this, I believe, Jesus is thinking about Isaiah chapter 6, when God speaks for Isaiah, say, saying, You keep on hearing, but do not understand. You keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Turn to me and be healed. Those who claim they can see, who hear the message of Christ and reject him, have hard hearts. The light of truth, which they reject, are actually blinding them. But when you confess Christ as your Savior, as your Savior, you are given spiritual sight. Recognizing Jesus, seeing Jesus, seeing him move in the world is the deepest form of seeing. I mentioned last time, we get to watch the Jesus show. We get to watch him move in the world. So in Jesus, the Messianic age has died. Only the Lord opens eyes, and he is opening eyes as promised by the prophets. So some Pharisees heard these things, they were eavesdropping, and they asked, are we also blind? Jesus said, if you were blind, you'd have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. So the blind man received sight physically, and this led to him seeing spiritually as well. But the Pharisees, who claimed to possess spiritual sight, were actually blinded spiritually. To receive Jesus is to receive the light of the world, to receive spiritual sight, to see what's really happening in that circumstance. I believe we have that access. I believe we have the access to see spiritual things because Jesus lights it up for us. He makes a way for us to see that. The Pharisees can't see who Jesus is. They're blind. They're the ones who are blind, not this man. The Pharisees are convinced that their system of rewards, judgment, punishment is the only system of value. And this system has to be preserved, has to be kept in place at all costs. And this preservation killed Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come to save a system. He came in the world to save you and me and all of us. 
We cannot overcome his light with our darkness. This is how great Jesus is. Our darkness cannot overcome his light. Our death is not going to overcome his life. Our rules and regulations and our systems and our constructs are not going to overcome his abundant, unconditional, unlimited mercy. Christ Jesus sees you as you are. And he sees things that no one else sees. In the midst of that, he brings his abundant mercy. His mercy is poured out for you, to you. And that's our salvation. Christ knows us best. He loves us the most. He is the best friend we can have. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you open our eyes. You open our eyes to see, to see reality. The only reality is to see your kingdom, to see our King, Jesus, on the throne. There'll be a time when that's the only reality left. Father God, I thank you that we can see that now. We can see Jesus working now. We can see the kingdom now. We, we can live out in the kingdom now, Father God. And that's a great gift you give us. So teach us to stay in that place, to stay in those places that you place us, Father God. Not to shrink back, but to stand and, and just be a light. Let Jesus shine through us and let him shine <coughs> to, our, to our schools, to our workplaces, Jesus wants to shine. Let him shine. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, that you heal our spiritual blindness. Teach us to pray for that sight. Teach us to pray for that, to ask for that vision of you, Father God. We just praise you and thank you for this awesome story, this great story. Oh, you're writing father is so perfect so wonderful so deep so meaningful so full of healing and life thank you for your word father and then thank you for your son jesus christ who died on the cross for us he died on the cross for our sins to give us new life that we can be raised up to a new life father god thank you for that powerful gift the old is dead dead forever dead the new, the new is here. Let us live in that newness, Father God. You want us to live in the newness that you bring. It's your life. It's your compassion. It's your mercy. We thank you. We praise you. And we love you. We pray in your son's holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
hearts and voices to the Lord in prayer, that he would be merciful to us. Father, thank you for the light of sun, moon, stars, street lights, candles, and lamps. Thank you for these created lights that bear witness to the true and uncreated light. Your Son, Jesus Christ, lead us even when eyes fail and earthly lights grow dim to his light, which no darkness can overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Heal the blindness of your church. Give it eyes to see its own sin and to repent. Give it eyes to see the world's sin and to offer your forgiveness to anyone who might receive it. Give it eyes to see the plight of all who are afflicted by sin, death, the devil, and to proclaim your redemption given through the passion of your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy, heal the blindness of those who hate the followers of Jesus. And all of us, and all who turn a blind eye to their plight. Grant that the words and actions of all who suffer on account of Christ may inspire their enemies to repent and believe in you. Lord, in your mercy. Give clear sight and strong faith to missionaries, sem seminarians, and their professors, pastors, and all of Jesus' apprentices. Through their labors, Lead many who are spiritually blind to Jesus for healing. Lord, in your mercy. Heal any spiritual blindness in this congregation. Give us eyes to see Jesus in one another. For his sake, help us love even people we don't like. Give us eyes to see new opportunities for serving you as we become braver in sharing our faith. Make us lamps shining like Jesus' love for everyone that we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, let your healing, blessing, and grace rest upon the blind and deaf and upon those who are impaired, with impaired senses of touch, taste, balance, or movement. Give them strength and courage. Sharpen the perception of their other senses. Surround them with people who respect and encouragement leads them to greater faith in you, Jesus, their light and their life. Lord, in your mercy. Heal the blindness of the nations and all who are in positions of authority. Give them eyes to seek your will and hearts and hands to do it. Give them eyes to see injustice, deceit, and cruelty, and the strength and courage to combat them. Make each of us into children of your light, living in faith towards you and fervent love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, as your dear son healed the man born blind, we pray that he would also bring healing, light, hope, faith to anyone who suffers from any affliction, including those who are grieving, Kyle and Laura Fever, the Otto family and friends, the Nelson family and friends, the Hanson family and friends, and the Thompson family and friends. Those who are recovering from a medical procedure, Kelsey, Twyla, Doug Dirks, Andrea Thompson. Those who were recently hospitalized and released, Cheryl Harlicker. Those who are currently hospitalized, J.F. Ever and Andrea Thompson. Those in need of continued healing and wholeness, Bobby Thompson, Gary Swartz, Belmont Sukhani, D. Hilker, Don Ingboldson, Jean of Audrey Larson, Dan Stendhal, Emily Otto, Sylvia Smuland, Leroy Dirks, Merrill Jensen, Bev Meixer. Lord, in your mercy. Those who are in ministry partnership with the LCMC, Pastor Bob Mankaka, Pastor Simone Hammer, and Pastor Enrique Estrada. We pray for the country of Ukraine, and we ask this war to stop now, Father God. And we pray for the work of the Spiritual Orphan Network. We pray for all pastors throughout the world, Father God, and their spouses serving in your churches, Father God. Prayers for all who are fighting off sickness. Prayers for all who are seeking truth. May the Holy Spirit open their heart and mind to see Jesus. Prayers for all who are struggling with anxiety, depression, and stress. May God's peace be experienced. May they find relief, hope, and a new life. 
in your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for all you do. We thank you for all you do, Father God. You're a great God. I lift up those prayers that are silent. Father God, that you would hear those too. We pray in your Son's holy name. Jesus Christ, amen. It's time for the offering. saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you in the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we desire to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we should have prayer partners to prepare ministers today during communion. If you feel led to pray, Please, please do that.
feels so good to continue with the Lord and to remember what he's done for us. What a great gift to share with each other. Let's pray. Eternal Father, for the sacred time with you and your people, we thank you for this life-giving and healing time with you, Lord. We thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Almighty God, the one who created the world and everything in it, the one who came to die for each of you, the one who lives in you, the one who loves you now and always, the one who will never leave you or forsake you, the one that holds you tight as you leave this place, and you deeply experience the kindness and loyal love of God until we gather again. With a grateful heart, go in God's peace. Let's sing.
There is power in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go into the world with the assurance of God's blessing, of God's grace, and God's perfect love. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.